There are three very good reasons for striving to achieve a distinction in your individual units and in the course as a whole. First of all, there is the feeling of satisfaction that you will get from knowing that you've been able to achieve the highest grade. Secondly, it will help your application stand out when applying for jobs and for the next level of your education. A distinction shows that you are somebody who puts the most into what you do and not somebody who settles for something that is just good enough. And thirdly, the academic standard required to meet the distinction criteria is very similar to the standards that will be expected of you if you continue with undergraduate or postgraduate study. The assessor is looking for two things in particular when applying distinction criteria. The first is an appropriate level of academic rigour, which you need to evidence by accurately citing a wide range of references in your assignments using the Harvard referencing system. And the assessor doesn't want your, your uninformed opinion. They're looking for your opinion based on the knowledge you have gained and the research you have conducted, accurately referenced. Keep in mind here that a, a reference to a learned journal or an established text is much more powerful than referencing a blog or a quote from a tabloid newspaper. And uh, never cite Wikipedia as a formal academic source, because it isn't. Wikipedia is content from, from various sources collated by somebody who may, or quite likely may not be, a subject expert. The second thing the assessor is looking for at this level is your ability to apply the theories and concepts you have studied to real-world situations. Ultimately, your business education is designed to help you build a successful business career, where it will be essential to apply your knowledge to real situations. To gain a distinction, you'll have to meet all the pass and the merit criteria we have already discussed, and in addition, two further distinction criteria. The first of these requires you to provide a critical analysis of the complexities of different types of business structures and the interrelationships of the different organisational functions. So if we look at the first part of the criteria, critically analyse means that you need to show that you can analyse the information available, make considered judgments using your knowledge and experience, and support this with evidence, which you will of course need to reference appropriately. This will involve looking at all the course materials provided by the college, reading the recommended resources listed on the last page of the unit specification, and conducting your own research and background reading. For example, a search for Types of Business Structures UK will provide a lot of useful resources for you to follow up. The second part of this distinction criteria requires you to apply your critical analysis to the interrelationships of the different organisational functions. In a, um, a perfect world, all business functions are working harmoniously together towards the same business objectives. But in reality, it's usually quite different. For example, marketing is expected to uh, deliver the sales needed to create the return on investment promised to shareholders but operations may struggle to produce the quality or the quantity of goods that sales staff have committed to, perhaps because HR has been unable to recruit suitably qualified staff. Any shortfall in operational performance might mean that finance does not have the working capital to, to pay suppliers by the due date, so they may temporarily hold back deliveries. And if the, uh, the IT systems go down in the middle of all this, things will only get worse. So you need to, to really understand and apply critical analysis to these complex and unpredictable interrelationships. The second distinction criteria the assessor will be applying to Unit 1 requires you to critically evaluate the impacts that both macro and micro factors have upon business objectives and decision making. A useful definition of critically evaluate is to make judgments considering different factors and use available knowledge, experience and evidence to support that judgment. You need to produce a PESL and a SWOT analysis in order to meet the merit criteria, but for the distinction criteria you really need to go even further. Imagine three different situations. A baby products manufacturer, 
the head teacher of a primary school and the manufacturer of cricket bats. A, a pestle analysis might identify a downward trend in the birth rate. And critically evaluating this in the context of our three examples might lead you to conclude that the, the baby products manufacturer is likely to experience an immediate drop in demand. The primary school head will see an impact in perhaps four or five years time when those children start at school. And the cricket bat producer may or may not experience any impact at all, depending on how you evaluate and interpret the information that you have. To meet the distinction criteria, you need to show evidence that you can think logically about real-world business situations and reach knowledge-based conclusions. Finally, three tips which you should keep in mind when writing your assignments. First of all, make sure that you sense check and spell check your projects before you submit them. Correct spelling and grammar aid understanding of the key points, uh, but also demonstrate that you really care about what you're writing. Secondly, take every opportunity to showcase your knowledge and understanding of the core concepts, models and theories in the unit and demonstrate your ability to apply them. And thirdly, keep close to your tutor for support and guidance.